Good morning, guys. Hey, how's it going? Hopefully, you have had a great week so far. Um, I just had a really good dinner, so I am full of energy and so excited. So, uh, let's start off a little fun today. What I would like you to do is point out the spelling error Mr. Herring has in this video. Hold on. There we go. Spelling error gone. Okay. I saw it as I was talking and it bothered me greatly. Okay. <clears throat> so I would like to hear from you a little bit this week. Okay. Uh, if you're watching this video now, hopefully you're watching in the morning. Join my Zoom. It is 9 to 11. If I need to get on with you between the hour of 2 o'clock and 2.45, I can do that, but I need to know. You'll have to let me know. So uh, get on 9 to 11. If it needs to be earlier, I can do that. If it needs to be before 12, I can do that. But you got to let me know. Okay. Um, also, number two, go ahead and write a private comment. What do you think about the story so far, the historical fiction we're reading? The Secret of the Winter Count. What do you think about it so far? How do you like the main character? What do you think about the characteristics of a historical fiction? Hmm. What do you think about it? Let me know in the private comment. That way I know you watch this video and you've been reading. Because I want more than it's just cool. You know who you are who are going to tell me it's just cool. Yeah. So, complete. Uh, here's what we're doing today. I have assigned to you a theme practice because in historical fiction, theme plays a really big role. Because the author is really trying to teach us something, right? So, I've given us a practice and an anchor chart to remind us. So we had, nope. <laughs> uh, Mr. Herring's going to go crazy. Okay, here we go. So here is our, oh, Fancy is getting into some trouble. Oh, dear. So remember the Sanka chart? We put it in our journal. You should still have this. So refer to this whenever we're working with theme, okay? To help you out. Remember, theme, it's a lesson, message, or moral the author wants you to learn. It's the heart of the story and usually is unsaid by the author, but we can infer it from the text. So we have our common themes down here and then questions to ask to help you figure out the theme, right? What did the character learn? How did the character change? And what message is the author sending you? Still not there yet. Here's the theme practice for today. So I thought this one was pretty cool and it's pretty quick too. So you have your theme word bank there to kind of help you. You're going to write the theme that closely matches the character's actions in the text. Okay, I'll help you with the first one. My best friend was having a party Friday night, but I also had a baseball game. This was going to be a tough decision. If I did not go to the game, I will let my team down. So what do we think the... What do we think that one of the possible themes could be? And by the way, you don't have to like go look up a list. It's right here, Word Bank. So what do you think? Well, I can think of two. Okay. So I can think of the first one of loyalty, right? So you could write this one of two ways. You could say this was uh it's the theme is loyalty. How do you know? Because it was going to be a tough decision. If he did not go to the game, he would let his team down, right? Yeah. So he's feeling loyalty for his team because he doesn't want to let them down, right? He knows he will if he misses it. Now, another way you could look at this, what about sacrifice? By not going to his friend's party, he is sacrificing that to go to his game. Or he'll go to the party and sacrifice letting his team down, right? Interesting. But I think the author... I think the author's message here might be about sacrifice, about giving up the fun things to do the things that we have uh, said we will do. Because when you join a team, you're... You're putting your effort to that team, right? So could be teamwork too. So see, you might have a slightly different answer than me. And that is okay. But you need to back it up with text evidence. Notice, how did you know? Give me text evidence. Give me a sentence. You can even do a quote 
out of there, but give me a sentence. Okay. So read each little story here. There's only three of them. Promise. It'll be great. Read each little story. And then once you're done, write what you think the theme is and how do you know? What tells you that's what the theme is? Okay. That's what I would like from you. And this is just a little warm up practice. Okay. It will not take you very long. And then uh, you're going to read chapter three of the secrets. The secret of the winter. Okay. And then you will complete page 354 and for the theme in your textbook. So again, I have provided a picture of it for you in case you don't have your book with you. You can do this on a piece of paper or you can print out the picture. So in for theme, a symbol is something that has its own meaning and also suggests other meanings. When you infer a theme, you put together text evidence, such as symbols, and what you already know to understand the text's big idea. Okay. Okay. So when we infer a theme, you put together text evidence. Oh, such as symbols. Mm -hmm. And what you already know to understand the text's big ideas. Cool. So in your turn. You're going to go to the close read notes in the secret of winter count and underline the text that helps you infer a theme. Okay, guys, this is a really great time. If you didn't take your book with you, now's a good time to tell me so I can assign you the online version. Just thought about that. Make sure you have your book. If you don't have your book, tell me. Thank you. And then text evidence. This is number two. Use your evidence to complete the diagram. Then infer a theme. Okay. So first thing we're doing, go to the close read notes in the reading and underline text that helps you infer theme. Okay. So let's see. Okay. Okay. So we're looking for symbols. Okay. So our text evidence, we should see a symbol, right? And so uh, the first one is pictures in the winter count. Okay. So those are symbols. Cool. And what does it, what Emma does with them? So we're focusing on what Emma does with symbols. Okay. So notice we have an example and then we give text evidence, right? So both sides, you're going to choose a symbol, write down what that symbol is, and then give me text evidence that shows what Emma does with them, okay? So Emma learns that the tribe believes in little people who helped find water. Remember the pictures of the little people, right? Same thing over here. What does Emma do with them? Or what Emma does with them, okay? That's what you're doing today. If you have any questions, please join my Zoom. It's 9 to 11. Contact me. It's 9 to 11. Join my Zoom. Love y'all. Have a great day. High five.